Next up, we're going to take a look at the effects, and for this, I just have the synth layer set to a basic saw wave without a sample in here, so we can just kind of get the effects on a pretty dry sound to see how they're working. But if we go over to the effects tab, you'll see that we have a layer A and B chain rolling here, basically. So you have two slots in each of them. The signal of layer A goes into one and then into two in series, and same thing for B. So two parallel chains with two slots for A and B, and then those two go into a main effects chain where there are another two slots dedicated to delays and reverbs, which we do have the options for on the layers, but this is just kind of the effects that you would typically have at the end of your chain. In terms of the effects though, they are pretty standard for what you would expect from an offering of effects, and if you are familiar with other Arturia instruments, especially the augmented ones, you're going to be familiar with these effects, and even if you're not, they are a pretty standard set of what you can kind of expect from an instrument that provides a full range of effects, which none of them really have any big curve balls or anything that will end up being too confusing or anything, but what we'll do here is just kind of run through them and get an idea of what each of them do and what their controls refer to. For each of them, we have a bypass that we can turn off the effect for the slot. Then you'll have a dry wet that you can mix in the wet or affected signal with the dry or unaffected signal. Depending on the effect, that might be a useful tool. You also have presets for each of these that you can choose from or save your own for the settings within that particular effect. Looking specifically at the multi-filter now, we have our wet turned up 100%. We have a filter of a few different types. We have our low pass, a band pass, and high pass to choose from, and then the slope that you can pick, 12, 24, or 36 dB slope. You'll see steeper or less steep. Your cutoff is, of course, the position at which it will be shown. If we play a note, right now we're just set at that low-pass filter. You get a pretty standard low-pass sound that you can apply some resonance to. You see there's a little peak at your cutoff position. So you can get very resonant and have different sounds come out of the filter with these different settings, depending on how you want it to be set up. You'll note also for all of these, the display here is a pretty good representation of what the effect is actually doing. And typically you can pretty much understand the idea of the effect just by looking at that, maybe even being able to click and drag in there for some of these effects to directly control a few parameters at a time, but it's a pretty helpful display there. We'll now move on to the parametric EQ, which similar to our filter, this is just a number of different bands. You can click and drag in the display here again, or go through any of the bands, low shelf or high shelf, to then change the Q or bandwidth, the gain, your frequency cutoff, and scale, which is the entire thing instead of a dry wet. Your scale is just how much the parametric EQ is applied. So a pretty standard EQ to shape the frequencies of your sounds. Now moving on to the compressor. A regular diagonal line here shows no effect, so we're not playing through here, but as we bring down our threshold, a ratio will be applied to the volume of anything over that threshold basically taking what would be an input and shaving off the top of it. And you'll see that reduction shown once we reach that value. You'll see that you are compressing your sound there. Turning on the makeup will apply a gain so that as you would be bringing the volume down, this will make up for that lower volume. You also have a manual gain that you can apply. And above your threshold, the ratio is how much you're going to actually be compressing, so a higher ratio value will reduce the dynamic range of anything over the threshold, so a more compressed sound. Then a lower value, especially with the gain on, we're kind of exaggerating the effect here. Your attack and release are also how quickly the compression will actually take hold, so longer attacks, you get a bit more time before the compression comes in, so you get a little bit more of a transient sound, and your release is how quickly it will let go. So, different sounds there, maybe you want to mix a little bit of the dry in with it for a parallel compression, but overall just a pretty good standard compressor that you can deal with. Distortion is similar to compression, however it actually distorts the sound's waveforms, making a less transparent sound of course, so you have different algorithms to go through, with different shapes that it will distort your waveforms with. Generally, you could say that the more complex the shape here, you're going to get a more gritty or aggressive sound out of it. So you turn up your drive, you have a different shape here. You're going to get more harmonics the further from a simple shape here that you get. You also have the option to apply a filter onto your sound, either pre or post distortion. Having it on pre and using a low pass filter, for instance, with a high resonance, you can get certain frequencies distorting since you're really boosting them with that resonance as opposed to if you do that afterwards you don't get that distortion sound on the actual resonance or whatever from the filter so you have the option to choose where you want your distortion to actually be applied in whatever way 
that it may be working. And at the moment, we have some dry mixed into it. So it's 50% dry, 50% wet. But if you want a fully distorted sound, you can play with those settings to get what you want. You also have a dark option to just kind of dampen some of the higher frequencies. And it can be subtle sometimes, but depending on what you're working with, your filter can be a little less harsh with that on. There's also the auto gain, which compensates for the distortion's output. Typically, you're going to want that on because it can get pretty loud if you're distorting a good amount. And a lot of the times you would be if you want that distortion sort of sound. Which in some cases, you also have the option for a tone, for the overdrive, for instance, working in a similar way. So, moving on to the next one, we have a bit crusher. This is another form of distortion. As you see, this is taking a wave and basically decimating it into a stepped sort of shape. I'll switch to 100% wet to hear what's happening. Downsampling is lowering your fidelity, bringing some crunch out of it, and bit depth. A similar idea, you see the visualization of what it's doing. So each of these are degradations you can add to your sound if you're looking for that lo-fi crunch. Your chorus is just going to basically split up your sound and detune some versions of it to give a thicker overall sound. You can see the idea there. Your rate. Delay is how far they're apart. The depth, how much they're going to be moving. And feedback, how much you're going to hear. You can have up to three voices. And you can enable stereo or mono output. So, a solid way to thicken out a sound. You also have the chorus June 6, which is just based on a specific chorus. But you do have a rate and depth for that as well. You can see the basic idea of what's going on again in the display. Moving on to the next one, we have a stereo pan. Very simply, this will move back and forth between the left and right sides. You have a natural option to make the perceived volume level remain constant, or you can just have it be linear so it moves linearly between left and right. You also have a mono bass to keep the lower frequencies based on below this cutoff in the center, which you might want to do if you don't want to separate your sound too far. Your rate is just how quickly it'll move in hertz or cycles per second, and the amount is how far between completely left and completely right you're going to be going. So a pretty straightforward panner that you can use. Then the phaser is next. This isn't fundamentally too much different than the chorus, but the effect does sound distinctly phaser-like. Basically dealing with phase cancellation to make a movement sort of sound that can move between the stereo image and give you that classic phaser effect. You also have a flanger, another fairly similar effect. Familiar parameters, wide for stereo width, and that is your flanger here. Then you have a reverb, which you can see the tail displayed here. You can change the size, the pre-delay, the K time damping for how much of the high frequencies you want. Higher will dampen the more. Your input high pass will filter out your lower frequencies before hitting the reverb, and then your input low pass, same idea but from the top, depending on what you want to send into the reverb. You then have a few different types of delays. The digital delay is just what you would expect. You can see what each of the delays will basically be doing. Displayed here, you have a stereo which kind of adds some variation between the delayed signals from the left or right displayed as the top or bottom here. Your feedback is how much it will actually feed back in there. You can also ping pong to further adjust how much of the stereo image you're going to get. And you have time that can be in subdivisions or a millisecond value if you want it to be there. Your high pass and low pass frequencies for your input. And overall, just a standard sort of delay that you would expect to have. A pitch shift delay does exactly that. You'll be able to shift the pitch of your delayed signals. Your feedback is obviously how much will come in. Your pitch shift, you can see by an amount of semitones that you can... Shift the pitch of each of those repeating signals. The spray is how much it will disperse your feedback for an interesting effect. We can turn your time down so we can kind of hear it a little bit more for the effects of these more quickly. But you can get some interesting, often digital sounding effects out of that pitch shifting delay, which can do some pretty cool things for a sound. Of course, your high pass and low pass again. Then offset is the difference between the left and right channels in either direction so there can be a little bit more stereo difference. But our last one in here is the tape delay, and this is going to be based more on how you would do this in an analog fashion using tape. So rather than having feedback, you're going to have the intensity and you can kind of get some saturation from the tape sound if you turn that up. It's also fun to 
adjust these parameters so that your feedback can kind of be an element of the sound design there. You can play with your time and stereo to adjust basically what the pitch of your delayed signal might be. But as far as actually using it as a regular delay, it can be done so just like that as well. Those are our layer effects though. You have the two slots, remember, if you wanted to have two in a row for either layer. But after that, there is the main effects in which we can also apply a delay to both of the layers at the same time fed in here. Whether it's the digital pitch shift or tape, it's the same basic idea that we saw before. You have your parameters for them here at the bottom. You can enable or disable this entire effect, use a preset, etc. And then you also have a reverb at the end of the chain as well, which rather than just the digital one that we had in the layer effects, we also have a convolution reverb that works from different impulses in different rooms to simulate more accurately certain reverb effects. But the idea here is basically the same as far as what the parameters apply to here. However, you have a much more wide variety of sounds that you can actually get for your reverb to fit perfectly with your sound. And then you also have volumes for each of the output gains of these effects. That is the extent of our effects tab though, and then we're ready to move on to the last tab, which is our macros in the next video, so I will see you then.